There's a lot of reasons for doing a trip like this at this stage with the bus. Maybe a few reasons not to, but the number one reason is fun. Our projects begin with inspiration, survive on grit, and define an era of our lives. We skip the excuses and focus on results, doing whatever we must to meet the challenge. We learn about tools, procedures, parts, and strategies. We endure disappointment and make do with what we have. The last few chores of Project Vandemic stand between us and the prize of road trips and daily driving. Maintaining a thorough approach now, despite some complications, is the final rite of passage that will deliver us from inspiration to reality. Sometimes the greatest challenge is balancing our expectations against what actually happens, learning to pivot, and get the job done anyway. Our purpose at Haptic Garage is to build it and go. We build it right and go while the going is good. In the comfort of our domain, we are the mechanic. Venturing beyond this familiar space, we become the driver. Trading relative security for living life, we embrace its fragile existence. Today, we drive. Welcome back everybody, Brent here at Haptic Garage. The bus is doing awesome. I've put about 800 miles on it in the last couple of months. No major issues, it's been chugging right along, which is great. I think that means that now we can justifiably call it a driver. It runs, drives, and stops. So what I want to do is graduate. I, I want the bus to get into that next level where it's a daily driver. You can kind of argue we're already there, but according to my to-do list, <laughs> we're not there yet. I want to knock off some more of the items on the to-do list and take it for a good long drive. In fact, tomorrow I've got a route plan that'll be about 200 miles or so. To start, I want to get the front end up in the air Relube the front beam because it has been several hundred miles now and it had been so long since it had been lubed beforehand So I want to top that off. I've also had a couple of situations where it would have been nice to have a horn now I do have a horn. It's over here <laughs> So let's drag this thing out and get it mounted maybe a little bit of cleanup, but yeah, let's install that horn So we're gonna knock out a few things here uh, just to make sure that we continue to pay attention to the bus. <laughs> this is a vehicle that likes attention. We're going to make sure that we stay immersed in how the thing's running, keep it running nice and happy, and it'll treat us well. And we'll get all the way where we're going tomorrow and all the way home. I got an idea. Those of y'all playing at home, this is one and five ace. I like it. Based on previous experiences, which really weren't all that bad, uh, I'm gonna try something. I saw one of these online. Uh, it supposedly locks onto the fitting, so I bought it. We'll try it out, see how it goes, see if I wasted my money or not. <laughs> so far, so good. I know the check valve in the Zerk fitting isn't doing so great. I'll give it one more pump, see if that check valve seats back how it's supposed to, but I need to replace that. Ooh, nope. Okay, let's swap this guy out. For anyone dealing with this themselves, uh, this is metric. I measured it out to be a, an M6 or a six millimeter thread with a one millimeter pitch. Let's get this in here and hopefully all the rest are fine. And it's acting stripped, even better. do here. I'll take 
taking a close look at this, trying to figure out what I can do. What if I could weld this up somehow? Now behind that is a bushing and the swing lever, and all that needs to stay in good shape. So I don't want to go any deeper than the thickness of that metal. There's also a bunch of grease back there, so I don't know if I've gotten it cleaned out enough. So there's a lot of unknowns here, but I may just go for it. I cannot find my screwdriver. Does anybody see my little red screwdriver? You know, the one that I just had? Boy, this has really turned into a project. So what I think I'm gonna do is clean this up just as good as I can with a wire brush and then plug the hole. What I don't wanna do is weld down into it any deeper than this metal here that I'll be tapping. But fill it all in, punch it, drill it, tap it, and hopefully we're on the road again. I wanna get it exactly in this spot so that everything lines up with whatever's going on inside there. This would be best done with the beam out and during a swing lever refresh. That's not good, that's really porous. There's still crud in there. I gotta get this cleaned out. I have to grind that out and I need to get the area cleaned out better. Oh, that's not good, not a good start. I've done some more cleaning. I just think there's too much stuff back in there that I can't get to. Well, I feel like this is kind of risky, but it might be my best option. So let's see if we can weld up that hole. Okay, here we go. Something's wrong. Something is wrong. This has gotten a whole lot more involved than I ever wanted it to. We were just going to grease this one and then move on to the other dozen Zerk fittings on this front end. And we hit a little snag. <laughs> so let's see it through. Have the swing lever out. Now I've been able to really clean everything up and I feel a little bit better about this. So I'm gonna go for it one more time here, see if we can weld that up. Let's grind it down and see what we actually have. Okay, here's the big moment. Can I tighten this without stripping the threads? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Okay, that felt good. Woo! All right. We ran into a little bit of a problem when we were dealing with a little bit of a problem that came out of a little bit of a problem, but Working our way back through the problems, when I took the swing lever apart, this seal had disintegrated and it just, it just came out in a bunch of pieces. There'll be a bunch of grease in this area. So this seal goes on top of the swing lever. I cannot get just the seal that I need tonight in time to go on a little drive tomorrow. What I'm gonna do is try and replicate that functionality I, I can't make a seal like this that stands on its edge but i can make a flat one that goes underneath this lip and maybe that'll do the trick and i'll make another flat one that goes over the top here i'm gonna use some pretty thick cork this may be too thick i've got some thinner stuff here if it doesn't work but we're gonna try it and see if we can limp along I'm gonna mark this so the idea is that is bigger than this cap. I also need 
the inside diameter of this gasket to be a little bigger than that wavy washer. Let's mark some other stuff. That's the middle. Looks like my Sharpie is dying. That's the inside diameter. This is just some conduit that I've sharpened the end. Used it for something sometime. to remake that gasket. Okay, gasket number two. Those gaskets may be a little thick. I went ahead and made a new gasket with the thinner material for the top, but I'm gonna stick with this thicker one on the bottom. Oh, none of this is cooperating with me. still way off. We're probably a quarter inch shy of where we need to be. Yeah, we're way off. That's awesome. Let's see if a little compression will do the trick here. Okay, problem number 432. Well, I'm starting to get the idea that when things don't go well, there's more I can show you. <laughs> so here's Second attempt, here's the one I was using, the thick cork. Now I'm gonna try this thin stuff, see if we can get things lined up like we need to. I got in a little bit too much of a rush on that last attempt, and I did this. I was trying to use this bolt to finalize lining things up, and it just wasn't happening, and now I've messed up the threads. So I can fix this, I'm lucky that I have a thread chaser for this size. The cool thing about a thread chaser is it's not as aggressive, so it's it's not going to cut the threads too deep. It's just going to repair what's there and not take away too much material. If you use a tap or an actual die to repair threads like this, they end up a little bit loose. I mean, it works. It's better than nothing, but it ends up a little bit loose. So let's use this thing and see if we can save this bolt. Otherwise, I'll have to dig around and find a, a replacement. So this repair doesn't put any material back, but it'll clean up what's left. I promise to be more careful. Well, things start to go together a little better when you've done it 16 times. No good luck charm. So far, I do like this lock and loop thing. <laughs> okay, I think we're all set, folks. It wasn't pretty, but we got it. So here's a Zerk fitting we added with that fancy dancy pivot bolt for the e brake. Let's give it a shot of lube here. I'm not expecting it to need much, if any. I'll take that. <laughs> this is the six hour lube job. Okay, let's take a look at the driver's side. Just knock all these out at once. See if we can top off the gear oil. This will have to come loose. <laughs> so, place your bets. Mm -hmm. 
You can feel the wrench flexing a little bit there. Not cool. There we go. <laughs> Can't say I've ever had to do that before, but it sure worked. I'm gonna clean this off a little bit. There's some sand on there that I do not want to travel down into the box once this plug comes out. So that's perfectly dry, which is probably not good. And this is what I have to put in there. This is what we use in the transaxle, GL4, gear oil. I'm gonna try to use this thing, which is called a slurp gun. I don't even know if this one works. The seal could be bad in it, who knows. But we're gonna give this slurp gun a try. The idea is you kind of suck up a little bit of the goo like that, and then you squirt the goo where you need it to go. And so hopefully this is gonna work out. <laughs> we'll see you together. Okay, pushing on the thing. Check that out. Nice. I need some more. I think I'm slurping a lot of air when I get the fluid in, but it is working, little by little. I do believe this box was dry. Finally. Okay. bit of a hurry I think I just want to get out of here so let's take a quick look at bears so I have a bunch of stuff that I've been carrying around because it goes with the bus like I wouldn't call this sun visor here a spare <laughs> it's just a handy place to store it so I've got a mishmash of all kinds of things far from an organized situation but the highlights are here I have fuel pump have bearing seals that would be kind of a fun thing to do on the side of the road but we could do it if we needed to uh, fuses of course i think i have a voltage regulator in here throw out bearing uh, valve cover gaskets but here's the real essentials is the cables right so throttle and clutch cables are going with us uh, picked up one of these at a swap meet recently so that is going with us i uh, even have a set of brushes and okay so there's some stuff here. Probably not everything that I wish I had, but some stuff. I have my old VW toolbox here, so as far as I know, that's got pretty much everything I need in it. So I'm just willing to do this on faith. <laughs> Instead of eating up the fun day, digging through these boxes here, uh, I'm just gonna take the AAA card and enjoy myself. So let's go.
just gotten back from a test drive. Now that the engine is hot, I'm gonna dump the oil. It's been a little over a thousand miles. I kinda wanna see what comes out of it. The oil change interval is a little longer than that, but that's all right. This thing doesn't have a filter and there's some unknowns involved. So let's dump the oil. Might find some brass from that distributor, uh, drive gear, who knows, right? So we're gonna put some fresh oil in it and see, see what we find here. This is one of those gaskets that I put Permatex 3H on and let dry a day or two. Let's see if it's gonna play nice here. Hey, I'll take that. So it's sealed, I didn't have leaks. I did retorque a time or two, like really, really, really lightly, and it didn't leak. So I kind of like that. So if we're stuck with those silly paper gaskets, I think I'm gonna prepare a, a couple of sets, one for this time and one for the next time, and we will move cautiously forward. see some shiny bits in there there's one of my copper washers that's okay but there's a little piece of brass tiny little piece there's some over here another copper washer another four copper washers wow I didn't do too good there's some brass some little slivers of brass well I'm, I'm glad that they came out I don't see anything terribly scary though that looks like a piece of RTV so I don't see any chunks of metal other than the brass that I was halfway expecting to see. Here's the drain plug. There is a little bit of crud on it. This is, you know, one that has the magnet in there. So that's a little bit of ferrous metal. Not sure if that's terribly normal for this engine. We'll see, we'll, we'll look at it next time. And that completes our analysis. <laughs> Very scientific. Overall, I have to say I'm pleased, but you know, every engine has its own personality when you're dealing with these old ones. It's the next day. I think the gaskets are in good shape. I've got somewhere I need to go and I'd like to take the bus. So let's put this thing back together and take a little ride. The oil plate is nice and clean, so we're in good shape there. I'm not totally confident in this screen, but it's the one I've got. I don't know, it's probably fine, but I think I'd like one in <laughs> a little better shape than that. bit of a hurry but I'm not going to neglect the air filter we're gonna get this thing cleaned up and some fresh oil in it real quick here and then we'll head out on our little trip I've been kind of interested to see just how filthy this thing gets I'm hoping not too bad because I don't really do a lot of dusty road stuff this actually looks like it's in pretty good shape I'm gonna clean it anyway but Glad to see that it's not completely full of gunk. I've been using a bottle of this in each oil change for a, a big block V8 in the RV. So I use about a half a bottle for this. This is some ZDDP additive that kind of makes up for what's been taken out of modern oils.
today we're gonna do something pretty cool. We're going on an epic VW adventure to the biggest show in Florida. And to get there, <laughs> we're gonna be doing this. So we're gonna use the Mosey home to tow the bus to the show. So this ought to be interesting. It's, uh, I don't know, it's totally cool. It's a little intimidating. I'm pretty excited. So we'll just see, we'll see how this goes. So come along. I'll be honest, this is a little bit nerve wracking. <laughs> I'm in it with an old vehicle, towing an old vehicle. So there's a longer list of things that can go wrong, right? But we'll take it step by step. It is Saturday at Bug Jam, and we are about to go on the poker run. Hey, buddy. Wanna go for a ride? Come on. You ready, buddy? I'm talking to you. Are you ready? Okay. This is going to the Sunrise Domestic Violence Center. Don't steer me wrong. I will take no fewer than five wrong turns. So there's wrong turn number one. Let's see if we can uh, detour. this out ace of clubs Am I that right diamonds no clubs hearts no something clovers what's the one that looks like a clover clubs? the ace of clubs is that good i think for card number three to go along with the ace of clubs and the three of clubs. Does that mean I can still get a flush? It seems more likely that I'm in the running for the worst hand at this point. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, I'm sorry. This works. <laughs> Six of clubs, hey, Six that's the same clubs. suit. Yeah, there that I've go. had got on the other two. I think that's good. champions right here. It all hinges on this last card. Yeah. Da, da, da. All right, draw your card. Ta -da. Oh, that's four clubs. I don't think that's anything. And you do have the opportunity to buy a final card. It's filled with lucky. Oh, I'm not feeling lucky, but it's for charity, right? Yes. All right, I'll do that. Yeah, another club. Then that'd be a flush ace high. Yeah. It doesn't sound bad. Yeah. <laughs> According to oil. Well, I didn't win the poker run, but I did have a lot of fun. I finally got to do something that had been on the list for a long time. You know, this show has always been enjoyable as a builder, and the swap meet is the best around. 
But this year we celebrated the full experience as a driver. Project Van Demick has shown us that a motivated individual, using what they have where they are, may improve their part of the world even while the rest of it seems to fall apart around them. Despite the continuing hardship and the tragic losses of this difficult time, I'll always look back at my experience and remember a few thousand friends who helped me put an old bus back on the road. In this, this haptic garage, We've made the effort through each task and all the details, weathered the failures, felt the successes, and followed through to complete the goal. But Haptic Garage is not this space or this project or this person or anything here. It is you, each in your own space, pursuing your goal, reaching your destination in your own way. As you've graciously supported this series, your project has been patiently waiting for this moment. It's the one you've had in mind this whole time. This is your call to action. You are not just the dreamer, you are the builder, you are the driver, and you're always welcome here. Build it and go so our paths may cross again. Thanks for being a part of Project Vandemic, and I look forward to seeing you on the road.